I love racing games, like pretty much all of the old Need for Speed games, the OG Forza games, and a lot of the stuff made by Codemasters. Need for Speed in particular has always been my favorite, except for this piece of shit that came out in 2015, where the cutscenes looked like they were made by a tablet kid with access to action movie FX. Holy shit, whoa, this is so cool. Yeah, holy shit. Whoa, dude, super photorealistic cutscenes with acting that looks like it's out of an anti-smoking commercial is what I want in my racing game. Screw drag racing, or daytime. <laughs> Anyways, I really do like racing games, but it seems like a lot of the big budget ones outside of Forza and F1 leave me a bit disappointed. Most of them are pretty fun, but ultimately I feel like I'm playing the same game with a few different changes here and there. The Crew 1 and 2 was boring to me, Forza Horizon 1, 2, 3, and 4 just didn't do it for me either, and Need for Speed Heat was just repetitive and uninteresting. I know this may not be the most popular take, and I respect your opinion if you like these games, but I was at a point where I was looking for something different. Oh, that's hot. Oh, that's look at hot. that. Something different. BeamNG Drive was the game that scratched that itch for me. A racing and driving game that was unlike no other with physics that didn't feel like they came straight out of the racing minigame in Toontown, and customization that actually catered to me depending on what type of car I wanted to drive. This game is seriously unique, and while it is an indie game, it blows some of these bigger AAA titles out of the water and delivers something truly unique. Just give me a second, and I promise you I can explain what makes this game worth the money, and probably even more money. An unlimited number of cars, trucks, planes, and whatever other vehicles you want, unlimited customization, tuning, and car mods for all types of cars, soft body physics that blow your mind more than Amber Heard shitting on Johnny Depp's bed, the ability to mod any vehicle, map, or even vehicle part into the game with ease, difficult challenges, the ability to play multiplayer, an awesome community, the most realistic car simulation software on the market, and a lot of goddamn charm. And that is just the tip of the iceberg. This game offers something for everyone, and it's one of the most replayable, unique, and thought-out racing games ever made. Hence why it's sold millions of copies and has tens of thousands of active players even today. So let me take some time to explain to you why exactly this game is so awesome, why it's worth your money, and how it gained the amazing reputation it has today as the 44th highest reviewed game on Steam with overwhelmingly positive reviews. Let's talk about BeamNG Drive. Alright, real quickly before we go any further, I just want to thank Thrustmaster for sponsoring this video. If you like racing games, they make really nice and affordable racing wheels that can improve your experience drastically no matter what game you're playing. Make sure you watch until the end of this video where you can see how a racing wheel complements this game and many other racing games, and like I said, thanks to them for sponsoring this video. Now let's continue. If I had to describe BeamNG Drive to someone who didn't know what it was, I would say that it's a sandbox driving simulation game with a huge workshop, great modding capabilities, and unlimited potential. It's the only sandbox driving game that I've ever seen, and if there is another one that matches the style, I promise you it's not as good. You can genuinely play this game however you want to, whether it's by exploring off-road in a rock crawler jeep, racing rally cars through the jungle with friends, stopping AI criminals as a cop in some of the pre-made challenges, or just cruising around the city in your favorite customized car. I hate this comparison, but it's the Minecraft of driving and racing games. Or something like that. If you like cars, this is the game for you. And even if you don't, you probably will still have a lot of fun in it. The more passionate players can spend hours tuning and creating their dream car in a virtual environment, and the more casual ones can just fuck around and destroy stuff. Bro, oh my god. Holy shit. As I said, there's nearly unlimited potential as to how you can play this game, and I'll be talking about the specific playstyles or things that you can do in a little bit. But first, for the highlight of the game, crashes. Pretend you are Great Uncle Cletus from Wetumpka, Alabama. After a long day of drinking Budweiser, beating your wife, and touching your nephews, you decide to turn on your TV and watch some NASCAR. Is it entertaining? Hell no. It's cars driving around in a circle for hours on end with half of the participants being named Dale. But there is one thing that keeps you interested. The crashes. While it's fucked up and maybe Uncle Cletus is a sociopath for enjoying the crashes, we all know that it's the most entertaining part of the entire race. It's exciting and it leaves you in awe every time it happens. It's the same reason why people stop to look at bad car crashes on the side of the road. And it's one of the things that really makes BeamNG Drive stand out as an outstanding and unique game. 
The cars in this game are designed to crumble, fold, and crack like a real car would in any real life car crash. When you slam into a pole going 80 miles per hour, the car will react in the same way that a normal car would. If you ram your rocket power battle bus into a group of other rocket power battle buses at 200 miles per hour, the game simulates the crash the same way that it would happen in real life, as this probably does regularly. The crashes are exciting, and the way that the physics are simulated in this game is unlike anything I've ever seen before. Even with the amount of hours I have in the game, every time a crazy crash happens in the middle of one of my challenges or races, I am blown away. And it's a good selling point for this game, which is why there's so many videos of it on YouTube. Also, half these videos are marketed to literal toddlers, and what do toddlers love more than car crashes? But that's a concern for another video. These crashes are the one thing that I show my friends when I explain to them what makes this game so cool, and it's probably the thing that you'll have the most fun with at first. At first. Yeah, what the hell am I talking about? I could still enjoy this destruction with over a thousand hours in the game, and the developers realize that it's a big selling point. That's why they have options for things like cannons that can drive around and literally shoot massive projectiles at cars. Yes, you can drive a cannon. If that doesn't make you realize how charming and cool this game is, then I don't think anything will. I mean, there's an entire playground map with jumps and walls and all types of places to really do some damage to your vehicles. I don't know how you could see stuff like this and not have fun with it. It's so badass and whether you check out a map like this one or the one where you have to make it down a cliff, or if you just crash your Audi into a wall, you're going to be amazed every single time. This game is a playground of destruction and that helps to make it so freaking awesome. But destruction by itself will probably get boring, right? I mean, Teardown is a really cool game to experiment with, but you're not going to see people with thousands of hours in it. Beeman G has a lot more than destruction though, because the driving itself is some of the best I've ever felt in any game. The cars and trucks in this game have a weight to them, with heavier cars really feeling and handling like they have increased weight, and lighter cars feeling jumpy and responsive just like they would in real life. It's definitely more of a simulation game instead of an arcadey one, and you're going to have to consider that when thinking about how you want to play it. I'm a big fan of off-roading in this game in particular, because the vehicles have realistic suspension and grip, and when you're climbing over rocks and hitting the trails, you have to consider your approach and environment around every corner. My favorite experience to date in this game is downloading a multiplayer mod and exploring the jungle together in jeeps. We climbed rocks and went down narrow trails and crossed rivers, and even though we didn't have a set objective or goal, we made our own objectives and it made the experience a lot of fun. The off-roading is the most fun and challenging part for me, and I often find myself coming back to it over other playstyles. I downloaded an off-road workshop map that had a long and challenging trail, and spawned in a rock crawler to try to complete it without flipping over. It was a bit of a challenge, and I did struggle throughout a lot of the process, but it was extremely satisfying. You could see the suspension changing as I crossed different sized rocks, and you could feel the tires sinking into the mud as I crossed rivers. You could see the brain capacity of a small child attempting to drive a car as I struggled to get around this one corner and spent like 20 minutes trying to make it out with 10 different cars. It reminded me of my original experience with an off-roading game called Spin Tires and I fell in love with it. But that's not all. You can play this game a hundred times and every time it'll be entirely different. You just have so much freedom to do what you want and no matter what your playstyle, you will find something to do. My friend Will is more into street racing and drifting, so he would often do exactly that and spend time building out tuner builds to race through the cities or around the highways on the map. You can take a muscle car and cruise through the city, or you can configure your favorite rally car and attempt a high speed race through dirt trails on a tropical island. While you're free roaming through the countless in-game maps and unlimited number of workshop maps, you can do whatever your heart desires, even when it comes to the customization of your cars. I'm not lying when I say that this game lets you take it as far as you want with making a car feel like yours. You can change nearly every single part, from your engine, to your tires, to your seats, and even your license plate. Oh yeah, look at me, feeling so much cooler now. During that off-road adventure I mentioned earlier, I made a lifted diesel jeep with enough horsepower to make a Civil War cavalry feel like a Chuck E. Cheese merry-go-round, and I flew through the jungle destroying every native animal and plant in the process. And you can do this with each and every end game and workshop car that you find, and no matter if you want a drift car with tons of torque and no doors, or a three-wheeled buggy that can hit 100 miles per hour, you can do whatever your heart desires. And for the ultra mega nerds out there, you can even tune your configured car with things like suspension changes and gear ratios and really fine-tune the details of your dream car. 
This game has a sandbox of excitement, and that's just in the free roam mode. But some people may need a bit more structure to have fun, and you can do that as well. While I did have a lot of fun just goofing off, the thing that kept me most invested in the game were the scenarios. Beam&G Drive has dozens of pre-made scenarios with easy access to hundreds of workshop-made ones as well. These scenarios are pre-configured situations where you have to accomplish a specific objective in order to win. These objectives range from trophy truck adventures to high-speed cop chases and even one where you have to stop a semi-truck with a car, like your CJ in San Andreas and your entire family is on that damn train. The parameters of these scenarios are pre-created, and you have to do whatever the developers or modders want you to do in the amount of time they want you to do it without crashing or failing. The best one that I've experienced is a rally car race across the deserts of Utah that I had to complete in under 5 minutes. There was a super long and difficult course, and I had to try my best to make it all the way to the end without crashing in the shortest amount of time possible. These types in particular are a lot of fun, and if you're a competitive person, the challenge of being able to beat your previous time, or even to compete against your friends, makes you keep retrying over and over again until you have a good run. Not to mention, I set up my racing wheel for this challenge just to make it a bit harder and more realistic, and it made the entire thing much more exciting and intense. In fact, while I often mess around in free roam mode casually with a controller, I became a sweat in these challenges and I used the racing wheel instead. Drifting through loads of shipping containers is a lot of fun normally, but doing it with a wheel and pedal set really made me question my sanity. Some other examples of challenges that you can do in this game are this one, where you have to jump this shitty pickup truck and somehow make it to the end without destroying it, like I did. Yeah, don't ask me how it works either, I literally lost half of my truck in one of those cool crazy crashes that I mentioned earlier, and I continued to make it through the course, with the racing wheel, all the way to the end. And I was missing half of my car. Don't ask me either. I think I'm just a natural with this thing. But holy shit, it was a lot of fun. Then I messed around with a high-speed cop chase where I had to catch a guy and not gonna lie I hated that one. But I made up for it with the next one where I raced a trophy truck around a high-speed dirt course and I felt the struggle of what these drivers must go through on a daily basis. Because especially on the wheel, this was pretty hard. But yeah, drifting, stunts, rock climbing, no matter what you're looking for, there is a scenario for it in this game, and the structure of these scenarios is another thing that helps to make this game so awesome. Especially when you use a racing wheel like I did, because that improves the experience drastically. I use my Thrustmasters T248X racing wheel when I'm playing this game, and I have to say, it is absolutely amazing. So when I heard that Thrustmasters wanted to help me out by sponsoring this video, I was absolutely blown away with excitement. I'm not lying when I say that this wheel is the best racing wheel I've ever used, and the experience of using one, along with a set of pedals like I have, makes any racing game 100 times more fun. This new wheel and pedal set is extremely easy to set up, with many games recognizing it naturally, and while I will say I still kinda drive like a baby Ricky Bobby in Talladega Nights with this thing, I feel really cool and it makes games like BMG Drive much more immersive and exciting to play. I never had one of these until recently, but it just adds another layer to some of these racing and driving games that you don't get to experience with a standard controller or mouse or keyboard. And yeah, you heard that right. This baby works not only with PCs like I use, but it also works with most of the major game consoles. So you could have a good time with the Thrustmasters racing wheel no matter what platform you're on. If you're interested in upgrading your racing game experience, check out the T248X and their other products by clicking on the link in the description. Thanks again to Thrustmasters for sponsoring this video. So with everything I've touched on so far, it seems like I've covered most of what this cute little indie game has to offer. But oh no my friend, that is far from the truth. How dare you jump to conclusions like that? This is only the tip of the iceberg. Imagine the destruction, scenarios, exploration, and all of that other stuff, but with any vehicle or location that you could ever dream of. This game has hundreds of modded cars, maps, scenarios, and more, and no matter what your itch is, oh buddy, you can find a mod for it. The in-game vanilla maps do get a bit boring at times, so you can go on the mod repository and look for something cool to change it up. Oh, look at that, a car jump arena. Why don't we spend some time messing around and jumping these cars to see how easily they get destroyed. What's that? You're tired of the hundreds of variations of the in-game cars? You can download a mod of this piece of shit car and become the world's worst driver. Because for some reason, every single person who has one of these in Florida has 20 Disney pass holder magnets on the back and drives like a goddamn idiot. 
But yeah, you could find mods for diesel trucks or BMWs or boats or engine and tire replacements or skins and paint jobs and all types of stuff for pre-existing cars or scenarios or free roam maps or anything your heart desires. The point is, if you want a mod of it, you could probably find it, or if not, I heard they're pretty easy to make. The customization and sandbox environment mixed with the potential for unlimited cars and maps makes this game a truly timeless masterpiece. And not to mention, you could even go into the settings to change the physics and the gravity. What is there not to love about this game? Whether you're a hardcore car enthusiast or a casual enjoyer of explosions and crashes, there is one other thing that will blow you away in this game. The attention to detail. There are the more obvious things that I've already mentioned, like the physics and the soft body crashes and how water affects your car's performance, but these are all assumed. Of course, the driving itself is detailed in a driving simulation game focused on detail. But there are some other smaller things that really show how much the developers care about this game. In first person, the gauges move realistically with how your car accelerates, and the handbrake even makes a noise when you hit the handbrake button on your controller. When you crash, your windshield cracks in first person, and how your car is damaged affects how it performs and looks. There's even detail when it comes to the sound, like how the specific turbo upgrades sound different depending on how you tune it, and how different tires sound different on the road. Not to mention, each and every car has a truly functional interior with everything working how you would expect it to in real life. This is a minor thing that most people probably won't even notice, but it is one of those things that works subconsciously to make this game even better than it already is. The developers have been working on this game for over 11 years now, and they care deeply about the product they provide to their players. That's why it blows my mind that these psychopaths are still updating the game extremely frequently. What a great team, and mad respect to the people at BeamNG for making a timeless and unique driving game that will forever stand the test of time. Great work. Have you ever played BeamNG Drive? If so, tell everyone a bit about your experience in the comments as people would love to see it. If you haven't played it, what stands out most to you from this review? Is there anything I missed? I look forward to seeing you all in the comments. If you enjoyed, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to check out the Thrustmaster T248 by clicking my link in the description. I promise you it will upgrade your racing experience exponentially. It is 100% worth it. I will see you guys next time, and peace.